What's going on everybody? Welcome to my channel. Chad Wessel Camper here. I wanted to make a video today because I just got a new Aguilar head in the mail and I wanted to make a review about it and also do a comparison. So in the mail, I got the Aguilar AG 700 head and it's this black one right here. And on top, I have the Aguilar Tone Hammer 500. I've been using the Tone Hammer for about a year, maybe a little bit over a year, and I absolutely love it. I switched from Mark Bass Combo Amp, I had a GK Combo before that, but I am so happy with my decision about Aguilar because I just love the tone I get out of it for electric bass as well as upright bass. And the upright bass portion was a big factor when I was picking out a new amp. There are so many great ones on there, but I've just seen so many good products uh, coming from Aguilar, especially on upright as well as electric. So today I wanted to firstly compare the Aguilar Tone Hammer 500 watt to the AG700. And then when I get into the AG700, I'll do a little bit more of a review on it and talk about the features that it has. So right now, I just want you to hear a little bit of what the tone hammer sounds like. This gray one right here. See what it sounds like. Check it out. I'm going to kind of keep the variables limited. I'm going to have everything flat on the head and I'm going to have everything flat on my base as well so that we can really get the clear comparison. When I go into the actual features of the AG700, then I'll start messing with the knobs and whatnot. So I've got my Kiesel LB76 right now with some Ernie Ball strings on it, which by the way, I love those. And no, none of this is sponsored by Aguilar or Ernie Ball. I wish it was. I'm just making this because I enjoy the process of recording and seeing the difference for myself. This is what it kind of sounds like by itself, the Tone Hammer 500. So it already sounds great, obviously. Uh, I love the features on it as well. I love that there's also a drive feature on the Tone Hammer 500. That's something that the AG700 doesn't have. I'm not using the drive all the time, but I have noticed recently that when I put it on, if I want to, I notice it and adds a little bit of growl, adds a little bit of presence, and I really appreciate that. There's nothing wrong with this head at all. Great sounds, great recording sounds. I'm going through my SL212 cabinet right now. Uh, that doesn't matter so much because I'm DIing my head into my Apollo Twin. So we're not really capturing the sound of the cabinet, but that's an amazing sounding cabinet as well. I just want to point out one thing about the Tone Hammer 500. We've got gain, we've got mid-level, we've got bass, we've got treble, and we've also got a uh, mid-level sweep knob. And then over here, we have a drive knob. And that's what I'm talking about. I'll actually just turn that on for a second and just get a taste of the drive. <laughs> turn the drive up even more. <laughs> 
So you can hear a little bit, I changed my back pickup just to uh, accentuate the drive even more as the drive really affects mid-range frequencies rather than other ones. So now that you've heard the Tone Hammer 500, I'm going to shift on over to the AG700 and we'll get into that comparison. Alright, now we're on to the AG700. Again, this is the head I got in the mail today and I'm so excited about it. The reason that I got it, that I want to state, is because I noticed on gigs very recently, especially if they're louder gigs or playing outside or on big stages, if I pushed my bass, which is pretty powerful um, with the active pickups, I noticed that I was getting the clip signal a lot on the head, and I don't feel like I should be getting that because it's got so much power already but with the nature of my bass the specific pickups it has from kiesel uh, they're just really hot in general and i wanted to get some more headroom so i thought eh, you know i'll try out the ag700 can't really go wrong with it necessarily and i did play it a little bit already i'm really liking it so now i want to get into what that sounds like so i'm just going to play a little bit different stuff talk about some of the tones, change it up, and we'll go from there. This is the AG700 Aguilar head. Everything's flat right now. So that's sounding really good. What I noticed right off the bat is there's a little bit less high frequency from the AG700, even with it being flat and nothing's changed on my bass. I'm just noticing a little bit less high frequency in there, but that's totally fine with me. If I need to add any more, I can do that. And uh, I don't always like to hear a ton of high frequencies in my bass sound, depending on what I'm playing, of course. Some of the features on the AG700 are different than the Tone Hammer 500. Firstly, we've got this switch, one of the first ones, and it says deep. And then we have another switch over here that says bright. And what that does is it kind of boosts a spectrum of the EQ, the deep being the bass frequencies, the bright being the treble frequencies. and I'm going to give a little example of that right now. So the EQ is going to stay flat, but I'm going to turn on the deep button and show you what that's like. I can already feel it, especially in the room. Bass frequencies are for sure boosted. I really like that effect. I'm probably gonna be using that all the time. Now I'm gonna switch off the deep and I'm gonna turn on the bright. 
The bright switch is now on on the AG700. Sorry, I was just making some stuff up as I was going, but I can definitely hear the change in tone when turning on the bright switch. And uh, I'm thinking that you guys will too via the recording. Very nice. I'm glad that this head has that application because I'm sure there are gonna be moments when I need to use that, especially if I'm recording maybe a high bass part or some bass chords on something. I can see myself definitely using that. Or if I'm playing the upright, I could see myself using that as well to kind of add some presence to the bass. Now, unlike the Tone Hammer 500, the AG700 does not have a drive knob, a drive knob, but that's totally fine with me. If I want any sort of drive sound, I'll just use that on my pedal or whatever I need to do to get that. Not a big deal for myself. Let's uh, do a test and I'm just gonna turn up the bass so you can hear that a little bit. See what that sounds like. I turned the bright switch off, the deep switch is also off and we're just turning up the bass frequencies quite a bit just to hear the difference. That's awesome. The whole room is vibrating. It sounds amazing. I'm going to keep that right there and I'm going to turn the treble up quite a bit. Now we're going to have bass and treble more up. All right, I'm going to turn the bass down a little bit. I'm going to turn up the high mids along with the treble. That's nice. I'm going to take the treble back to flat. I'm gonna make sure that the bass is flat and now I'm gonna turn up the low mids along with the high mids. We'll just see what that sounds like together. definitely hear the difference on that. All right, now I'm going to take the low mids and that's going to be the only thing that's up. I've got the high mids back to zero, trebles back to zero, basses back to zero. This is just an accentuation of the low mids. <laughs> I can definitely hear that as well. I'm not a huge fan of the ultra midi, mid midi sound, but uh, I do think if you add it in in the right way, you can get some really cool tones, especially you know if you're trying to have somewhat of a Jocko sound, I think a blending of the mids and the bass is uh, definitely a way to get at that. So now I'm gonna do one more test. I'm gonna turn the um, I'm going to turn the treble 
up a little bit. I'm gonna turn the low mids down a little bit and I'm gonna turn the bass frequencies up a little bit. So that's the bass going up. That's the low mids going down a little bit. And that's the treble going up. Nothing too crazy. I'm gonna keep the high mids where they are. Let's see what that sounds like. that a lot that's clean so that was the treble turned down treble turned up i'm sorry treble turned up the bass turned up the low mids turned down and the high mids flat so i'm just going to give you my final thoughts i feel like already the ag700 is really nice i'll have to do a video documenting what it sounds like for upright bass as well i think that would be very important and I'm definitely happy that I bought this today. I think it's gonna give me some more headroom for sure. I'm gonna be using the deep switch a lot. I'm gonna be using the bright switch on some stuff. And um, I don't think that you can go wrong with any sort of Aguilar product, like I said earlier. So if you're in the market for something, if you do upright bass and electric bass, definitely recommend Aguilar. There are other brands as well that are fantastic. But um, in my experience, I'm very happy with the money that I've spent on this. And I hope you guys get something out of this video. If you're in the market looking to make a purchase, if you like the video, make sure to like, share, subscribe to it, really help me out. And also check out some of the other videos on my channel because in those videos, I like to document the gear that I'm using to record whatever I'm doing. So you can always go to the description and find exactly what was used to record whatever bass part I was playing on, whether it's upright or electric. So thank you everybody for watching the video. Hope it helps and I'll see you on the next one.